an eighth grader and be like, do you want a hundred dollars just to do my bread? You are not giving eighth graders a hundred dollars. I really was. Are you sure? Yes, Ty. I think, okay. I think before me you had one friend. No, I didn't. All right. Your my friend circle is like. I do have like low key OCD. And so, like, when I'm sleeping, I don't like feeling extra stuff on my bed. Crumbs. It was like those hairy nipples. Like, how hairy are we talking? Like, bush. No <laughs> shot. Hi, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Flow and Tell. And we are here with co host Ty. Co host? <laughs> Yeah, what's up? Okay, sick. <laughs> Look, okay, we're going to answer a question. But um, today we're going to be going through, I actually sent out an Instagram story asking you guys to ask me and Ty some questions for our podcast. And so that's what we're going to be doing today is just answering your guys' questions. Now, I went through some of them and then some of the questions were just like really weird that I read to you. That just yeah. Like, Bro, I'm, I'm not, I'm not Ty, by the way. <laughs> My name is Ty. <laughs> I'm 100% Vietnamese. Yes. So <laughs> Whoa, whoa, what? No, no, I'm I'm 100% Vietnamese. I, I personally don't think he looks Vietnamese, but you know. Okay. Yeah, it's your, okay. Your opinion. But he is full Viet, you know. He's not Thai, guys. So some of the questions were literally asking, like, Thailand stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I was like, yo, like, one of them was like, yo, are you a lady boy? I could Does be. Does that make you gay? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I was gonna say I could be a lady boy. You don't have to be tied to be that, but who knows? Really? Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Okay, when I first I just told him like yesterday when I first met him, I thought because he would grow out his hair so long. And it's crazy because right now it's so short. Yeah, no, but he would grow his hair literally up to like like here at one point. Bro, here. you're okay. Yeah, yeah, like right here. It was when I first met you, and I was like, "Is that a girl?" Or See, that's wild. She's called me a girl. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so let's start. Let's start with the first question. Is um oh this one's like for for me, but I think I I was gonna talk to you about it. But um so someone asked, how has your personal life changed since content? So for example, your friends, your family, your relationships. Um, so for me, my life has changed. Like, hmm, I think I'm pretty lucky to be able to just you know sleep in or not sleep in or live stream whenever i want to or not live stream <laughs> mostly the latter yes Fuck you, die. uh but um it's like it's like up and down it's like stressful then it's not stressful but in terms of like friends um it's a lot harder to make friends i would say i feel like uh i before like I always felt like I, I didn't have a lot of confidence. And so I, but in the beginning I was like, oh shit, like I'm a streamer. That's going to make me really confident and make me really cool. Cause I used to pay for friends. Like in eighth grade, I'd be like, you, do you want a hundred dollars just to be my friend? You are not giving eighth graders a hundred dollars. No, I really was. I stole a hundred dollars from my mom. Cause she would have like it in a little box uh -huh. from all her tips from work. Uh -huh. And I would just steal it and I'd give it to the popular girls in school. Yeah, what the fuck? Where's my hundred dollars? <laughs> Yo, I pay for food sometimes. Okay, Ty. I need cash. He I need cash. Move? I need cash. Hundred. <laughs> and I took them to a fucking steak restaurant because you helped. Hey, me I move. helped you move. Okay, that's okay. a lot. And I have to help you move again. <laughs> I know, but this time, no, you don't. When? You only helped me move once. Oh right. Yeah. That's true. But when you move. From oh, here. you are. Yeah, that's what oh, I'm I saying. Oh, I didn't even ask. Okay. No, but Thank I you already for know. I, fuck, I just fucked myself. <laughs> I need to go home. I'm lost. So, um, so, but yeah, and then like it got to a point where I was meeting other streamers, and then it, you, you know, you end up like mentally. I think, I think collaboration with other streamers is tough, and people kind of like always want to get to. Like, everybody wants to succeed, so then you're like meeting either clout chasers or you're meeting like people who aren't real with you. So it's very. I, I personally don't think I have a lot of clout, but you know, like I just I think that everyone's just competing with each other, and then and you just and then when you know you tell people you're a streamer, then they start asking all these questions, which is fine, but I just like don't want to talk about it sometimes, just because it's just I don't know, it's, it's just work. A lot. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot to say. It is work now, and so 
But then, like, nowadays, I'm like, guys, don't tell anyone that I'm a streamer because I just don't, I want to be, like, hidden. I tell everybody. You do? Yeah. Well, oh, okay, okay. Well, the if I don't have to follow meet her them, stuff. Oh, well, that's sweet. I see. But if I, if I like, because there's a point where like we were in this group of friends, and then every time that one person gotcha. would like introduce me, be like, this girl's a streamer. And like, it's just, it's just really embarrassing because I, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe they're like supporting me, but it also just feels like uncomfortable for some reason. Okay. That's fair. So you find it difficult to make friends, is what you're saying? Yeah. But I feel like, I mean, just from the outside looking in that you have developed a lot of meaningful relationships while being a streamer. No, no. All right. Cool. <laughs> That's sick. All right. It's what probably last friend, podcast. Guys. What friend do I have the last that one. I'm close with? That's a streamer tie. Oh, no. I meant like just friends in general, not just streamer friends. From streaming? No. Nah. My close. No, just your life being a streamer. Right? I mean, with or without being a streamer, I would have close friends. Would you, though? Yeah. Are you sure? Just from gaming. Are you sure? Yes, Ty. I think, okay. I think before me, you had one friend. No, I didn't. <laughs> All right. Name? All right. When? You, how long have you been streaming? Three years. All right. Before those three years, who was your friend? Josh. Was he really? Yeah. Bef- before. Oh, before I was a streamer? Yes. Oh, I had tons of friends before I was. Dude, streamer. she's capping, guys. I'm not. She's hella capping. I cap. had, I had five group of girlfriends, which I can show you on Facebook. Oh, but you've okay? talked. All right, we won't get into that. Go, ahead. <laughs> Go on. We've talked about those girlfriend of yours and how they've treated you. Oh, that was college, but oh, high school. You know, I had a lot okay. of group of group of girlfriends, and so we were all great. We were and like, you paid for all of them. To no, be your no, friend. no. That was in middle school. <laughs> this one, we were great. We sit in bathtubs together, like naked, and like showing each other our titties, and like we kiss each other. It was great. <laughs> Why do I feel like this is not true? <laughs> this is so accurate. This is not in true. In college, then I had a toxic friend. Yes. Okay, I see. One close toxic friend. So you're you're saying you had a lot more friends prior to streaming? I I did have a lot more girlfriends prior to gaming and streaming. And then, because I was very girly, girly. And then when I started gaming, then my best friend, who was my ex, is was my closest friend. Mm-hmm. And then I would create more friends through gaming, and it would just be virtual. We never meet each other. And those were my besties, because we would like, even though we never met each other, I still felt close to them because we game. So you would say your friend circle now is smaller. Yo, my friend circle is like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but in terms of quality of friends <laughs> no, i mean that's quantity still but quality compared from now to then how would they it went like this Ooh, streamer <laughs> all right bet. right there that's cool that's it yeah i want to hear that that's cool why and so your quality of friends went down oh no quantity sorry i heard you wrong you sorry, you said I'm saying quality now. <laughs> okay, and here, she goes, Yeah, quality was like this. <laughs> and then after I became a streamer, I'm oh, sorry. I thought you meant quantity, because that was my quantity like this. Okay, okay. quality. Better watch your answer. <laughs> From down to up. Okay, sick. All yeah, right. yeah. And you're up there. You're right there. Then there's booty tickler, which is my ex. <laughs> My ex is my best friend. What a nickname. And then my cousin. He's up there. Nice. Know? Everyone's okay. up there. Okay, sick. Okay. All right. Um, hope that answered your question, mister. Or Mrs. <laughs> yeah, it's assuming right. now. You're assuming genders. <laughs> assuming Stop trying to cause drama, Ty. You can't say drama. Jesus. All right. If Ty is a permanent co-host, he should be compensated accordingly. Well, we ain't making anything to be compensated. <laughs> Listen. You think you think I'm making bank, bro? Each YouTube video I upload is like a dollar to two dollars to four dollars max. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna need my boba. Yeah, <laughs> dude, that's not even. That's like that's like two videos probably. All yeah, right, boba's like what, how five many bucks? videos you got? Like ten. All right, you owe me five boba. Two times. Let's see. Let's say let's say on average like two bucks. Two times five is ten dollars, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. so I I owe you. Wait, wait, wait. One boba. Because oh, it yeah, has yeah. to be split in half. True, true, yeah. true, true. 
Yeah, I only want blue. And boba is like hell expensive now. Actually, I think about it. It's like it. five bucks. Yeah. Yeah. If you get nothing in it. No, for real. Yeah, like this was five bucks. Shut up. Yeah. Oh, I just pay. I don't really look at it. If you put stuff in it, it's like seven bucks. No way. Okay, I'm not getting boba. I have gout. Anyways. Sucks. You don't have gout. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay um but like the thing about me and ty though is like we help each other out all the time without really yeah. like being like you'll compensate you know like mm-hmm. whatever we do with each other like i did initially help him with etsy and i was never like um, he's been great guys also his etsy's in the description down below if you check guys it out help him. yeah because it's like a bunch of anime stuff and i really do hope that you get sales from people watching this um but like in the beginning like i was literally like because Ty didn't have anything really going on, mm-hmm. like, in terms of hobby or something like that, and a side gig. So I was like, try this Etsy stuff out, and he is, is succeeding so well. I just helped him in the beginning, kind of push him there. And then, but I never asked for, like, yo, like, where's my money's at? You know, we don't really talk to each other like that. Sure. Did I? Sure. No, it's more <laughs> like, it's more like, yo, now you're doing Etsy. Why aren't we hanging out? (laughs) I did that because he would hit me so he could hang out with me more. (laughs) Why aren't we hanging out? I'm like, because I'm busy trying to push out listings. And I'm like, shit. The whole point that I wanted you on Etsy is you can hang out with me more and have money. And now you're too busy to hang out with me. (laughs) Hey, but it'll pay off in the long run. Yeah, but I ain't got patience. Yeah, I know. I don't have patience, When we made cinnamon rolls, you had absolutely zero patience. (laughs) And look, you don't have to spill these beans. I son. mean, the wait time was an hour, and you just kept I checking like, it every ten minutes, fifteen. No, it was minutes. like every forty minutes. Don't lie! <laughs> don't don't lie! You just okay, okay, how okay. do you lie so effortlessly? You know what? I learned. How from is that you. possible? I learned from you, Ty. All right. Well, chat knows that's not true. <laughs> Your viewers know that's not true. Well, we're just not like that. So he doesn't care. Um, I told him that when we actually do well, like Instagram doesn't pay. Um, and then obviously TikTok does pay, but mm-hmm. it really depends on like the video. And so, you know, we don't really, I told him, I was like, when we, when I'm able to give him something, like I can split in half when we get there. Mm-hmm. But right now I have to like put whatever I can, the chump change back into like editors or something. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not tripping over it. I mean, if anything, yeah. I'll just you know create a union, and fight against you. Well, you know what? To compensate him, you guys could just go buy his Etsy stuff. Oh, so they have to pay me. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Hey, look, you're entertaining them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You'll Sick. probably make more than I would make in a YouTube video from one sale. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, my margins are very low. Right now. Yeah, they're very low, low right okay. now. <laughs> Uh, um, what are your biggest turn ons and offs? What are yours? Uh, a turn on for me is in Adam's apple. I really you don't like, like Adam's? I, a turn on. A turn on. Yeah, okay. I love Adam's apple. The larger the apple, the sexier you are. Mm. A turn off is oh, when you're slouching while walking, when you shake your legs while you eat, um, if you're chewing talking there's food spewing out of your mouth <laughs> this girl got a lot of icks <laughs> tell me tell me all your icks i know we did a video about I don't this know. that's just like that's just like i hate it and then like like um you know i feel like that's it sure but okay. the turn on definitely is okay. like wide shoulders i love that um deep voices adam's apple strong jawline mm-hmm. um tiny nose mm-hmm. and then uh oh Big forearms, big hands, long like like slender men like body. Did you say slender man? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, she's been into creepy pasta. She's trying to get into I it. I am not into creepy so pasta. Don't say that. Don't she's say that. Looking I'm not, I'm not into man. creepy pasta. I just Jeff I like the, the long, killer. you know, slim jim type body. <laughs> Lanky. Lanky, yeah, yeah, yeah. Slim, you know, slim jim, bro. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> okay, what's yours? Uh turns on turn ons for me are Features I find attractive, I think, are like, like the like the collarbone, the clavicle. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. A nice clavicle, That's a slender hot. neck is pretty hot. That's very hot. That's pretty hot. Uh, turn offs. I think I just don't like people who are, I guess, too mean. I like kindness. I like kind people. What's the too mean? Like cussing at someone? Yeah, or? just being like overly aggressive. People not being open to like letting them talk or like, you know. 
mm, not seeing their point of view and and putting them down like very closed off yeah very and closed judgmental off and judgmental and putting okay. putting people down i don't like are you talking about turnoffs in like a couple or like a girl or like in about- a girl like if okay, i meet okay. a girl and she's like kind of mean or kind of like too aggressive not aggressive in a or like because you can be aggressive in a good way yeah right yeah but aggressive in like a mean way i feel like it's a turn off for me right i think so right. too or yeah. or like if you do you get turned off if like you see a girl you're dating being rude to a waitress or yes waiter? that's that that's Me a too. kind of meanness that yes. i don't like like you should be kind to people i yeah. think you have any other turnoffs? Like the uh, random the, ones, like a little, random turn a off. little random one that you're just like, oh, you don't like it if somebody is, is it a turn off? No, that's an ick. When someone like puts crumbs on your bed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, it's more of an ick. It's not a turn off, but I I do have like low key OCD, and so like when I'm sleeping, I don't I don't like feeling extra stuff on my bed. Crumbs. Crumbs or like his crusties. And, and any anything <laughs> on there that is interfering with my contact with the sheets, I don't like. And so sometimes, you know, people I know people eat on their bed and then they'll eat on their bed, they'll drop crumbs and they just leave it there. And I'm just like, I can't. I can't. Don't do that. Please. Yeah, Not on my do bed. It. I wanna do the tag. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> don't don't troll me like that. But I like I also like the clavicles too. Clavicles are very hot or like they're a nice hot. back. Yes, they're very yes. hot. Yes, nice back. Do you well, like cle- huh? For girls though, don't you guys also like when the guy has like that nice V? Oh, I don't care about that. You don't care about that? No, I don't. I think girls like really I mean, I think it's attractive on really? other guys. I never looked at it. What about like a hairy nipple? Oh. <laughs> oh well. A what? A like hairy a nipple? hairy nipple on a girl. I have never. No way. I have I hear never. All the time. Never have I seen this. Yeah, no, I heard that there, there's guys out there that told me that there's like girls with hairy nipples. Like how hairy are we talking? Like bush. No <laughs> shot. <laughs> a ring bush. Okay. <laughs> I gotta look this up later. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you guys have seen any of those. Let me know. Cause it, I haven't personally, but like I have heard that there are girls with like hairy nipples and it's like a turn off or something like that. You I can see how it would be. I mean, I don't, I don't think I would prefer that. What about large nipples? I'm okay with that. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's like not a problem. Big on a tiny titty. I don't care. It looks like meiosis. Mitosis. <laughs> say mitosis. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah no i'm I'm chill like a fucking oreo <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you good with that yeah i'm good with that okay I'm well you, you're good ty is easy going guys okay um how tall are we so well, how tall are you but we i'm five seven how tall are you ty uh my driver license says five ten but sometimes honestly i feel like i'm shorter sometimes i feel like so humble i'm five nine five eight but no, I think you're five nine. Probably five, five nine. Ton. Five nine to five, five ten. Five nine to five ten, I think. Yes. If I if my posture is good and if five I've ten. been like exercising, stretching, stretching, I'm probably five ten. But mm-hmm. most of the time I just feel short, feel shorter for whatever reason. I'm I'm always five seven. On a good <laughs> She's always five day. seven. Mm-hmm. Um Ty, can you cook pad thai? <laughs> I cannot cook pad thai. <laughs> I don't know why that would be a question. I'm assuming because people think I'm Thai, but I know. I'm not. Every time Thai introduces himself, he's always um, like, oh, my name's Thai. And then everyone would be like, oh, are you from Thailand? Yeah, that happens quite often. So don't feel bad. Like it, It's just a normal thing. Does that frustrate you? No, not at all. Oh, okay. It's whatever. I mean, I think the, the jump from my name being Thai to being Thai is... You know, it's not a big leap. So oh. makes sense to me. Okay. You're not like me where I changed my name. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I, no. I changed my name. I stuck with my name. Um, for better or for worse. Should wo- should Asian okay, I don't know why it's Asian, but should Asian women wash their vagina before oral sex or not? Washed versus marinated. <laughs> That's what it said. Washed versus marinated. Like I gotta <laughs> I gotta start. <laughs> Look, so um, well, what's your answer though? We know. Do you think so? Do I think so? I think I think everyone has their own preference. 
He was well, down. Some people are down for you know marination. The marination, <laughs> but I think I prefer cleanliness over that. Oh, okay. I was I was gonna say I thought you thought you wanted both. Oh, I mean I think it depends on the mood too. Like, what if one day you're just like hella turned on, and that's just something that you're down for? Then that's cool. But I think overall cleanliness is more important to me. Mm, okay. I do agree. I think cleanliness is very okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I definitely, yes, if you're horny, marination. If you're not horny, clean it up. You know, you got a sink. I do like this thing where I grab the head of the sink, put my two legs up, wash, 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 and then I'm good to go. Like, you don't even have to step in the shower. Well, I, just step in the shower. No, I fucking Asian squat. Just do it in the sink. shower. <laughs> I look like a praying mantis. Wash, fucking, wash, wash. You out here looking like a golem from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> okay. I do have a, like there is thing though we, we should wash because girls get like UTIs and stuff like that. Yeah. I actually don't like it um getting like eaten out or whatever, just because I would get UTIs very easily mm, just because my distance is shorter. So the bacteria grows a lot faster for me. Um, but I also agree. I heard a story that like men should also wa or men should also pee after they have, they I do, do anal. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. But some men don't pee. So like there was actually a story of tell you Ty. It was like, there was, um, a guy who did anal and this girl ate tacos Okay, and so then like spicy tacos. Yes, very spicy tacos. Oh no! Yeah, and so then like <laughs> that night he saw that his D was like hurting, and then the next morning it was like engorged, like the size of like a can, a soda can. Okay, and they went to the ER, and what they found was there was a little jalapeno seed inside, <laughs> inside of his D. And that's why it was like engorged and hurting because it was fucking spicy. Like his D went to go eat some jalapeno seeds in the booty hole. Dude, that sucks. I know, right? That's why you got to pee that's after. That's so scary. I, I think, know. I mean, at least for me, I pee after almost like every time. Every time I have sex, like my natural reaction is to go pee. Yeah. So it's like, well, it's, it's not a problem. But this guy, he just... He just does it and then he doesn't have to pee? Yeah, he probably that thinks seems like, abnormal. oh shit, my hole will just close. <laughs> I think your body like naturally knows to clean itself in that way or something. Or maybe he thought that. Thought what? Like his body would naturally clean itself. Yeah, yeah, but by going to go pee. Oh, right, right, yes. That's weird. Yes, you must always go pee, guys. I don't know, I wonder, do people in your chat, do they pee afterwards or not now? I or feel is it like just some me? people don't. No, I do feel like some people don't because I had to learn to do that. I did not know. Oh, you you didn't either. I didn't know at one point in my life. Yeah. For a while until I went to a gynecologist and she told me. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, For the boys, do you wipe your ass sitting down or standing up? The fuck? <laughs> These questions. If you're standing up, like your cheeks are together, that's going to make it harder to wipe, no? Well, I think or are you standing up and you're like spreading your legs? Yeah, I think you're standing up and like hovering and then like wiping your ass. Okay, well, I do it sitting down. I don't know what the difference is. Really. I do it with like one cheek up. Oh, I do it like that. Yeah, because yeah. uh, I got to reach. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And then at the end, I stand up just to get like the right for the hemorrhoid cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> You will know. You will know. No, I you won't. You eat too much spicy Thai. That's what happens. You constipate too. Well, I don't. Is it okay to reach out after one night stand or no? Let's answer this. Uh, I mean, I think if it's an established one night stand, then obviously you probably shouldn't reach out because, you know, you guys have agreed on that. But I think probably most cases, no one agrees on a one night stand. You just kind of sleep together. And then the next morning is like, oh, so what's going to happen next? And then you end up texting them. But if that's the case, then they'll either reply or not. So I think it's fine if you want to, if it's not established. And then whatever their response is, whether no response is going to be your answer on what's going to happen. What is that saying? You miss every shot you don't take. 
Yeah, that's the saying. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I I don't I don't know how you are. I'm just the type that's like fuck it, just do it. Like type it, text them, and just send it. I don't play those games. I think it's exhausting. Right. It's exhausting to play those like, oh wait thirty minutes before texting them type of game. Oh yeah, I hate that. I just yeah. text right away. Yeah. I don't have any reason to be like. Oh, she texted me. Let me let me wait three hours or the next day to yeah. to make her want me more. Exactly. Like, don't do that. But I, I don't know. I don't do one night stands, so I wouldn't know what the answer was. That's what's like how you answer. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would like to know how you and Ty met. Was it a mutual friendship from the start? No, she hated me. She said my name was boring. Listen. Hey, okay, hey is a very strong word, Ty. Okay, you I said I was a girl. I th- listen, listen, listen. I didn't hate him, okay? I met him through mutuals, yes. A mutual um, other streamer. And then uh, she, she, like, brought me to this house full of people. And then Ty was there. Oops. Ty was there. And the first time I saw him, like, he said hi to me. I was like, oh, cool. You know, first time I saw him, I was like, yo, what's up? <laughs> like, in my head, I was like, is that a girl? But I just like, you know, I I left that thought and then I became friends with this other guy and uh, he would always invite me to like hang out with Ty and his girlfriend at the time. And I was like, I was like, man, I don't know if I want to meet new people. I, I'm not good at meeting new people. I'm not always open to it. Um, So I was like, Ty sounds like a boring name. So I'm just not going to hang out. So prejudiced. <laughs> and then... um. You know what? It was just an excuse, honestly, to not hang out. No, I get it. I get it. I mean, and that friend, like, it's it's so nice of him to, like, try to get you to make new friends, yes, too. Because he was like, I feel like you would really like this person. Yeah. Like, he's he's good at that yeah. and, like, connecting people. So when he asked me, I was like, oh, you remember that girl Flo from uh-huh. the thing? And I was like, oh, yeah, I remember her. He's like, do you want to get, what was it? We were going to get sushi, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we we're going to get sushi. Yeah. And I was like. Actually, I was hesitant at first, too, because, you know, we I think we have the same thing. Where it's like meeting new people can be tiring. It can yes. be taxing. Yes. But ultimately, I was like, well, I have the mindset of I should meet new people. So I was like, OK, I'll go. I didn't have that mindset at that time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. But then I and think you thought my name was boring. We, well, yeah, I also thought your name was boring. But I also and then I remember like I was dating somebody at that time. And then we went to go play tennis and Ty loves tennis. And so um, I think that at that time, that's when me and Ty started talking more. Mm-hmm. Um, you taught me a little bit about tennis. Maybe? Yeah, I was trying to teach you how to hit the ball and how to like make contact, stuff yes. like that. And the basics. Then like when that relationship was over, um, me and Ty just got really, really close. And he was always there for me when I needed help with trying to understand myself and my growth. And so it was, I really like being around people that like talking about like relationships and your, and like personal growth. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of how I gravitated towards Ty. I think, yeah, I think you do like talking to people who are introspective. Yes. Like they reflect deeply on themselves and the situations they're part of. And they try to find like, an opportunity to grow. Yeah, he's right? like free therapy. <laughs> free therapy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell you it's free therapy. Anytime but I know, anytime. I know some people in your chat are going to be like, oh, he's just a simp. He fucking just wanted to be there for you, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm there for a lot of people. They think like, they think like you're trying to be out here trying to fuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, nah. I don't need to be doing that. We definitely like have set those boundaries, but like naturally we, we really respect each other and our we know what we are looking for and we don't we don't cross mm-hmm. down those boundaries. So we're very I think it's very healthy. I think so too. It just makes like a very comfortable friendship. Mm-hmm. Um and he's not friend zoned guys, like this is like a mutual thing. Okay. Mutual friend zone. All right. <laughs> Mutual friend zone, okay? You would friend zone me. I'd now remember, you. we were playing Power World, and then I think I read some. I put the beds down. I someone said in chat, or you said like, why are the beds so far apart? Uh-huh. And then someone in chat was like, damn, he just friend zone flow. <laughs> Listen, I friend zoned you too, okay? And I was <laughs> like, damn right, I did. Fuck you, Ty. <laughs> I should have put your bed outside. Fuck actually. you, Ty. <laughs> Um, if you are forming your own family, what would you do differently compared to your parents? Uh, me, I think, I think building trust is the most important thing rather than 
commanding your kid to do something, I would rather trust that they would do the right thing. So instead, like doing the initial, you know, teaching them like their values and stuff like that, and mm-hmm. then instilling it in them and hoping that they listen and do those things rather than always micromanaging them and yes. telling them they should do this, they should do that. Just let them do what they want to do and you're their safety net. That's what I would do differently. Would you be like their best friend? I mean, I don't need to be their best friend. Like I just need to be close with them. I don't know. I don't know about best friend because I think it's good for them to have best friends that are like among their peers. Right. Right. Like people they can relate with in life on that level. Right. Whereas like me as their parent, like I'm, I'm going to be at a different point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I think trust is the most important thing. I totally agree. It was, um, that's a really good question because like, it's the one thing like I would do differently is like the trust thing is a big one that Ty said. And the second thing is finding the right partner for the kids. And so like, I want to be able to treat the person I'm married to, um, the way I would want my kids to be treated by the opposite sex. Like, mm. suppose I had a male. Good like, example. I, yes, I want them to see, like, this is how my mom is, or, or my see. daughter to see this is how my dad treats my mom. That way they have, like, the correct standards to what and how they should be treated. Mm-hmm. Um, because growing up, you know, like, my parents were arguing really bad, throwing stuff and all that stuff like that, and I thought that that was normal. And so I want to find somebody that's, like, will treat me the way that like my daughter should be treated by another man and should look for in another guy no that's really good yeah Yeah. providing a good example of what a relationship should look like Mm -hmm. you know so they have a grasp on what they should strive for exactly instead of you know settling for something less than ideal yes exactly that's good that's really good actually yeah i've definitely thought about that because i i recently came to that thought because I was like thinking a lot about my my mm-hmm. past and stuff like yeah. that, so that's what it came to. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, next, uh, lactose intolerance in the Asian community and how y'all ignore it. <laughs> we ignore it all day. I ignore it all fucking day. Like I'm trying to live life. This milk tea right now. I'm trying to live life, guys. Okay, look, we all lactose intolerant, but that's why we got lacto like lact- lactose pills. La- yeah, uh, lactate. Yeah, lactate. lactate. And um, look, if it means we can enjoy food, ice cream, yeah, ain't milk, no way boba, I'm not gonna eat ice cream. I'll fucking bomb on the toilet just for that. Ain't no way. <laughs> fucking string cheese. Ooh, we got string cheese. We got cheese. that string cheese. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah, it. eat it, dude. I don't know why Asians are really lactose intolerant. Yeah, it's I think funny. it's because like uh, in Asia we don't naturally have cows like our ancestors and so they never developed the genetic code for producing um was it lactase the enzyme that breaks down lactose oh shit I and so know that. because we can't break down lactose it just bubbles up in our gut and I then we that. just boop, boop, all the time <laughs> fuck you know that's the thing guys like you're gonna date an asian girl or a guy they're gonna be farting all day yeah and it's pretty bad <laughs> i'm not gonna lie smells pretty bad. It was so stinky. It I smells hate pretty bad. Guys, I fart, but they don't smell. Yeah, they do. No, they don't. They actually do. They don't. No one just tells her to smell. No, yesterday her I was like, I have to fart. Boop. And oh, then stink. And it smelled. You're fucking lying. All right, sure. Don't listen Whatever. to him, guys. He's lying. Uh, best way to get over an ex. <laughs> I always, I'm reminded of the, that one saying, it's like, best way to get over <laughs> someone is under someone new. <laughs> but that's not the way. That's not the you way. You mean? <laughs> What? <laughs> look, look, let me tell you. So the way I get over somebody is I mentally prepare that this might like because we're arguing so much. You can kind of feel in your in your heart that this is going to end at some point. And I'm mentally preparing probably like a month in advance that this is going to happen. OK, so then I'm like preparing for it. I cry entirely for one day. OK, the next day hopping on hinge (laughs) 
I'm like, yo, I'm over it. I'm good, guys. Hopping on hinge, looking for my next guy. Scope, 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 scope. And then I find another guy, hot ass boy. Fuck boys, obviously. It got to go through the the list of like man whore names. And then find them and then go on a date with them and then date them a lot, hook up with them. But then it's like actually like you, you are with them and then you guys get in a relationship. You trap them. Yeah, you tra- well, no, I don't trap them. And then I can get in a relationship and you're stuck with them for a year or two. And then you just repeat the process over and over again. And you just keep getting hurt over and over again. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't I don't think that's the way to do it. I mean, for me, <laughs> I feel like after a relationship, closure is, is a very important thing. And it sucks because sometimes sometimes you don't get closure from, from whoever you're with. Sometimes they, they can ghost you. You know, you don't get that. And you have to develop or figure out that closure on your own and come to that conclusion and understand that you know you have to move forward despite having this history with this person and then with that i think letting your emotions out feeling them thinking about them and processing them you know because they say like when a breakup happens it's like a loved one passing away this is the same feeling yeah because they're gone right because they're gone yeah well in most cases. Yeah. But going through the grieving process is what helps you get over an ex and, and acknowledging that and not just bottling it up or ignoring it, you know, or getting under someone, or getting under someone or else or on jumping app. on a dating app to like fulfill your, you know, whatever. I'm sorry, guys. That's just me. Emotional or <laughs> physical needs. But yeah, I think closure is the most important thing. I really think that's good. Um, I definitely agree with him because the way the method that I did for a very, very long time until I stopped doing that last year or two years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it does. It's just it's the only way to break out of that pattern. Mm-hmm. Because like for me, it's like it's really tough. OK, like I, it's breakups are tough. No, it so is, you're going to cry. Sure. It hurts so bad. And so like, yes, People like to take the easy route sometimes, and the hard route, I think, is yours. Yeah. I mean, taking the easy route isn't necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes you do because it's easier. Yeah. Like, why wouldn't you? But I think as long as you acknowledge that there are better ways and that you strive to improve, you know, people can mess up. They can make mistakes, but it doesn't make them who they are. You mm-hmm. aren't your mistakes. You know, you're what you do after them. Right. right? So it never feel like... You're never good enough when you go through a breakup. Yeah. You always feel like that is like a big thing that happens through a breakup is like you always feel like I'm just not good enough. Yes, that is a huge feeling. Yes. That's a huge feeling that I've dealt with personally as well. Mm-hmm. I'm just not good enough. Right. But, but how do you think like you got past that mentality? Uh, well, I would say that I'm probably not past that mentality entirely. There are times where I do feel inadequate. And I think probably that doesn't necessarily pertain just to relationships it's probably my life overall Mm -hmm. right like how i grew up and like the things that i failed at the things that were expected of me that i didn't achieve Mm -hmm. like led me to this feeling of inadequacy right right and that probably in turn affects other aspects of my life right like relationships etc so i wouldn't say that i'm over that but i do mitigate it well i think well Mm -hmm. enough Mm -hmm. well enough by just um, trying to develop or trying to take uh, more stock in my accomplishments than to focus on my failures, right? Mm-hmm. So that's something that you can do. Like take the wins yes. when you can take them. Yes, I agree. No matter how small they are. I agree, yeah. yeah. I like that, yeah. And that's why I think they have those gratitude books. I think those are very important. Oh, yes. Like the little journals that you guys could have like every day, just think about like, Three things that you accomplish today, even if it's little, and then three things you wish to accomplish tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And those things are really good practices to be able to make yourself feel like you're good enough. No, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so whenever you focus on the bad stuff most of the time, and that's like part of your process, you lose track of all the good things that you've done. Mm-hmm. And then it just so happens that the negativity of focusing on the bad stuff all the time starts affecting your life. Yeah. And so I think you really, it it really is important to focus on your wins and having that journal, writing it down. Like I accomplished X, Y, Z today. I did this day. Like I think even getting up out of bed 
is a W. Hell yeah. That's a huge W. Yeah, I totally you know? agree. Making the bed is a big W for productivity. I never make my bed, but, <laughs> but getting out of the bed yeah, is a that's W. True, because yeah. you want to just, at least for me, I want to just rot in bed. I want to just lay there, but I get up, right? Mine is like going to the bathroom is like a huge accomplishment for me. Hey, that's good. Because like sometimes I get out of bed, I'm too lazy to like, I feel like going to the bathroom, washing my face, brushing my teeth is like a good start to my day. And like, it's like, okay, I'm ready. But like when I kind of skip all that, I just feel like I'm just being, like I jump onto this couch. I'm just relaxing and I jump back to bed and I'm just not starting like my day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Just lounging all day. Um, next thing is, do you break away from some of your cultural traditions? If so, how or why did you? Cultural traditions? Are we talking about like uh, culture in terms of... Like probably like Vietnamese culture. Right. But not like Asian parental culture. Like wanting to you to be a doctor, engineer, a lawyer. I mean, that's like the basic culture. Mine's yeah. more just like I stopped going to church every Sunday. But <laughs> it's a culture. But not all. <laughs> wait, are all Vietnamese people religious? I feel like a lot of the Vietnamese people I met are Catholic. A lot of them, yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't. I don't know what I broke away. I guess my Vietnam, my Vietnamese isn't that good, and that's just on me, really. I don't remember like any like culture things exactly. Oh, I don't wear. Do you wear owie eyes? Hell, no, I used to. You used to? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't wear the traditional clothing either, just because. I mean, I don't have any for one. And I think it just looks uncomfortable. And I'm a very comfortable guy. Yeah, same, same. I like Very comfortable comfy. dude. Yeah, I don't like feeling tight. Yeah, like I don't like feeling tight. In just to button something up. Yeah, I'm not trying to do that. Yeah, no. I mean, I guess I could get in better shape. <laughs> yeah, so same. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I ain't going to try to do it. I'm just kidding. I, I guess one thing is like my family... Um, always says like sex before marriage like that might be like a cultural tradition i guess i'm not really sure how to answer uh, that question but yeah i'm not sure because i think probably we're not as in tune with our our vietnamese culture sad to say yeah i mean we should be probably but uh yeah it's hard to answer that question when i'm not too aware of the defining cultural you know aspects same yeah um okay why does asian people's breath smell so heavily of garlic <laughs> because garlic has been pushed on us since we were young as Yo, the cure-all it's the cure-all for love everything garlic. i love garlic not gonna lie. yeah it's anti-inflammatory first of yep. all and it helps you poop mm -hmm. and it also tastes good in everything like once you so cook much garlic flavor. it's like ooh, this meal is gonna be the delicious. aroma yes. of just garlic in a pan is heavenly mm-hmm but then so your clothes good. smell bad. Your breath smells bad. It and is what it, it is. <laughs> <laughs> fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> fuck it. Um, Just like with milk. Fuck it. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> fuck that too. <laughs> I'm trying to help my brother with dating apps. How can a guy start a convo without being too reaching? Oh, yeah. That's... It's, it's difficult because dating apps, it's like... As guys, I think you don't get... Definitely don't get as many matches as girls. Because I know yeah, yeah. girls are like... Match, 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 match. Guys are like, no match. <laughs> so, so like, I think because of that, guys, our mentality is like, oh shit, we have, we, we're overthinking. We're right. Overthinking because we only have one shot, eat if that. Yes. Right. Yes. So we're thinking like what the message should be, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. But I think we do ourselves a bit of a disservice when we do that because then we just come off weird sometimes. Right? What's like the best like first response to say to like a girl that you matched with? I think you have to come to the reality that every girl or every person even has a different um they want different things in a reply. Some girls want a joke. Some girls want something that's you know less aggressive. Some girls want something that's more aggressive. So it's hard for you to even know what type of response to put right so i think what you should probably should do is like look at their profile trying to ascertain what type of person they are and then figure out what type of response they would like mm -hmm. and then just send it yep like don't think about it too much and if it goes well then it does if it doesn't 
well, dating apps, it's a numbers game. So it's just you being on there, connecting with people and just trying different methods. Just don't overthink it too much. I definitely I like looking at their profiles right. because um, every girl has like a passion. Everybody has a passion. Right. So yeah. So figure that out. Yeah. Like, say, oh, they like, you know, Apex. Right. right? Get they them like excited, Apex. you know? So. Yeah, those are my. <laughs> so they'd be like, drop your rank. You know, you, Yo. can, you can lie a little bit. It's good. <laughs> don't lie. I loved it when people be like, what games did you play? And uh-huh. then I'll immediately respond with blah 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 and then like well apex league of legends and stuff like that and then they'll be like i love apex i'm like oh first date let's go like (laughs) yeah i mean if and if you don't get a reply or even like you know they ghost you or whatever don't take it to heart it's just like it's a numbers game like you just move on to the next right if you let it bring you down and then you overthink the next text you kind of fall into this pattern of just hitting the wrong notes every time exactly right yes i like that um address what your mindset is when you receive cyberbullying on your streams or social media okay um so when i receive any type of bullying on social media you can handle it in the beginning i couldn't handle it at all like i would see when i blew up on my asian accent stuff on twitter i would get a lot of girls like avgs and they were just coming at me. And they are making like little videos and saying I was this and this and pick me girl, all this stuff. Because they're envious too. Maybe. I didn't know. I just, it, it hurt more because it was girls. Because um, mm. I like girls, you know. It's like I want to support a, other girls and stuff like that. And so, and I also was like, they don't know me. Like I'm just, you know, all, all this stuff. But then I would cry about it. And then I thought about, I was like, okay, well, how about like, just remember that everybody will say something about you, but maybe they're struggling behind the keyboard and Mm -hmm. their outlet is just to bring somebody down. And so I see it now as like, they're not, they're just words and they don't know me and that's Mm -hmm. okay. But where sometimes it does get to me is if I, I feel like I'm not making someone laugh or cause that's like my goal, you Mm -hmm. know? And so when, um even if it's like it hurts more when it's like your closest friends like that are like or closest streamer friends like my my viewers that i'm like close with that are kind of like saying something like i think that would hurt more than just like someone i don't know that's just like a username that i don't remember that makes sense yeah because they're they're just within they're in closer proximity to you for that to hurt you more. Yeah. The closer someone is, the more opportunity they have to hurt you. Exactly. So like, that's why, like I said, like I have like an exterior where I just want to make it seem like you can't hurt me and I'll fight back. But I, I try to do that. But um, when you get closer and closer to me, I'm more exposed to being like more vulnerable and like I am more exposed to the potential of getting hurt. Okay. Yeah. And that's where like I can take it. And if I don't know you, I can't take it if I know you. Right. Okay. I yeah. mean, that sucks. I'm sorry that that happened, but I think it is tough when you're in the public eye and mm-hmm. then it's like you get a lot of people commenting on your life, your lifestyle, your, your look, looks. everything. Yeah. They're just, you're under a microscope, right? Yeah. And it only gets worse the bigger you get, I yeah. assume. Yeah. So, I mean, I think you're handling it pretty good regardless. I think so too. I just try not to give it attention. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I think like if you fight back, that's like kind of what they want. Feeding the trolls. Yeah. yeah. And so I ignore it. Even when it comes in chat and they're like, you're cringy, blah, blah, blah. I just pretend I didn't see it. And I still like show that like I'm happy and I give attention to the positive people mm-hmm. that like that's actually good. love yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. Focus on the good. Yes. Right. Is the, is the message. But you'll still remember the negatives. You do. You do. It's just you try your best not to focus on I it. I do. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's okay? Two more questions. Do most ladies use online dating just to get affirmation and build self esteem? No, I don't think so. Oh, it said most. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't. Know. I feel like guys said that they they do. Like sometimes they they go on dating apps just to see if like a girl would like them and that affirms them. I feel like that goes right. both ways. It probably goes both ways. I mean, I don't know. If, I I mean, I don't know personally if most. I'm sure some people do. Mm-hmm. I'm sure some guys and girls do look for affirmation in dating apps to see what they can pull. But I don't know if most would be. Actually, I think I realized what type of guys I could pull just from the dating apps because I was only able to 
I was like, oh, I'm getting like fuck boys. Like, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> match you with me. I would have not known because I don't go out, so I wouldn't know. Yeah, but it, yeah, it, it, so like dating apps, though, like you have to admit most of it is is based on looks, pr- predominantly right. initially, right. even right. So it's like, yeah, you can see what you can pull considering how you look. Right. Right. Exactly. So it does make sense. Um, last question is how, where, and when do women actually want to be approached by a guy? Mm. Mm. I think that's different for a lot of girls. I have nowhere. Yeah. Cause I was going to say some girls don't do not want to be approached, but some girls do. I don't want to be repro- approached at all. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it first. Girls don't want to be approached at all. <laughs> thinking like when i go somewhere it's like i want to be somewhere and like i usually like to go without makeup so that i could be like hidden and i could be uh-huh. um i like to just be like like a like a shadow i, I like it's weird it's like i'm in the eye for i'm getting all this attention right i'm streaming getting attention i like getting attention in my home but i don't like it in the public like That's I, fair. I like to hide That's fair. i want to be like a, a ghost yeah i mean like <laughs> i said i think some girls do not want to be approached but there are girls that are open to it and there are girls that want it. It's so hard to tell. I think especially for guys because like you go to a bar or something, right? Yeah. And you like there are girls there buying drinks or like, sitting at the bar and you're like, should I approach her? You have yeah. no idea. No. You have no idea what they want. But I think like with dating apps, you just have to do it and then gauge the response. Right. Like I think gauging the response is so important because if – they respond positively, then yeah, then sure, mm-hmm. like you can Keep continue. Keep going, yeah. But if they respond negatively or not at all, know that you got to pull away. Whereas some guys probably feel like, oh, I can still keep trying. They don't get the cues. They, they don't get the cues, yeah. right? And so understanding that, it is that's hard. Right. It's not an easy thing. Right. I say it like, oh, it's so easy, but it's not. It's, it's not super no. hard. It is very tough, even for girls. I don't even know when to approach a dude either, but, and I don't know if they're single or not. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, right? so I'm scared. You don't. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that is the end of our questions. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this podcast segment. And thank you guys so much for participating in providing all these questions for me and Ty. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the day or night whenever you guys are watching this. And see you guys on my next episode. Don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe to this YouTube video. And if you're on Spotify, thank you for watching. And don't forget to rate. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Oh, also, don't forget uh, Ty's Etsy. Oh, my Etsy, yes. <laughs> I always forget to push that yeah, yeah, all push the it. time. <laughs> you got, wait, you let them know? What do you do on Etsy? Oh, I have anime inspired uh, clothing and gifts. He loves anime, so it's great. I do, that I love anime. Passion into that, yeah. And she's now getting into anime, which is wild because she used hey, to say, ooh, she used now. to say, oh, it's for, it's for kids. It's cartoons. It's car- <laughs> cartoons for kids. It's for babies. And I'm like, it's cartoons. Bro, you didn't even get a chance. <laughs> Look, the messages are so important in anime. That's what he, that's what he says. The yeah. messages, like if if any of y'all watch Vinland Saga, damn. Vinland Saga is that your is that your top one right now? It's not my top one, but I I do like the message from the the main protagonist Thorfinn at the end of season two. Thorfinn, huh? Is it Thor with a fin? <laughs> that's disrespect. We're ending this here. Okay. Bye, guys.